Tiana. Hey, you know what time it is, no press fam? Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Beatdown. The segment where two worlds collide. I'm your host, Class, and my co-host, Biggs. Doing it big, baby. And as a friendly reminder, guys, if you guys like our content, you know what you can do. You can share, like, or subscribe, or put on your notification to get the latest episodes. Today's episode, we dug up some really great ones. Now you see what I did there? And I'll be representing Indiana Jones franchise, Indy. Prepare to meet Kali in hell. Now, Indiana Jones isn't your typical professor slash archaeologist. He's actually, uh, given the extraordinary situations he's been in, he's done some extraordinary things for an ordinary man. Let's just put it in that essence. Um, so going toe-to-toe with Indiana Jones is, uh, is not just going to be a walk in the park. It's not going to be easy as a piece of cake. It's not going to be any of those things. It's going to be an ultimate challenge considering the fact his track record um, has been insane. And here's a few examples. Okay, here's an example. One example is when Indy went against a guy twice his size in a situation where a moving plane was spinning and swirling around during the whole battle sequence. So as they're fighting, Indy's fighting somebody twice his size. This dude is big. He is beating the crap out of him. One punch and he's already got his mouth bleeding and all that stuff. But even with that happening, even with the plane moving in rotation and everything like that, Indy still somehow managed to take down the big guy and take him out officially completely. All right, so let's talk about the countless fighters he's fought against. He's fought countless Nazis, okay? He's fought countless Nazis, and he's won against them. He also fought uh, a squad of armed, a uh, squad of men, sorry, in a burning bar while a bar was on fire, okay? So while the bar was on fire, he was taking down a couple of these guys, okay? So Indy is incredible when it comes to intense pressure. If he can manage to uh, maneuver around a rotating plane while gi- battling a giant, and at the same time, uh, he can manage to also battle or fight in a burning building while there are all these men in there, that's that's no small feat. Breathing in that that fumes is gonna knock you out, but Indy was strong enough to get through all that. So let's just be uh, let's be reasonable about here, okay? On top of that, the man has uh, managed to fight while being poisoned, okay? He had poison, he had to get the serum, and as he was doing that, he had to fight a few guys, take a few, few bullets, and still, and, and managed to survive and get the uh, and get the or the formula or the whatever you call it, the serum to save his life from being killed by poison. So he has shown that he's a boss when it comes to intense pressure. That wasn't bad enough. This man managed to take out one of some, one of one of the cannons, um, one of the cannons on a tank by using a simply just a giant rock to do it. Okay, I, I mean that. It's crazy that he even thought that it would work and it worked out perfectly. He managed to take a cannon out that way, okay? Another couple things, let's talk about the two main things that make this argument for Indy. Okay, let's talk about the bridge incident. Now, he was crazy enough to cut a bridge uh, down with him and a bunch of other people in it. And in that process, he still managed to hold on. And down below, there was all these killer, I I don't know if it's alligators or crocs, I can't recall, but they were there ready and hungry for a human being to come down and feed them. Now, Indy was going to obviously be that appetizer, but Indy was strong enough to continue to climb up those bridge, that climb up that bridge. And at the same time, while he's climbing up that bridge, he's fighting a guy who is trying to rip his heart out and a bunch of arrows in the process, okay? So in that, he still manages to survive, take the big guy down, the, the villain down, and get up there, okay? And while doing this, he has must have incredible endurance because he's holding on for dear life while dealing with all these situations, okay? Actually, there are three situations where I can make good examples. The other one was when he was fighting this guy, again, who is twice his size. There's a boulder, and he's about to get smushed by it, but he throws down with this guy, 
to the bitter end. And during that whole time while they're fighting, this one kid with voodoo magic is actually stabbing Indy with a voodoo doll. And Indy's feeling it to almost to the point where he almost got crushed. If it wasn't for a short, I forget, short top or something like that. I'm so sorry, guys. I forget the character's name. Uh, what do you call it? I think it was short round. Uh, what do you call it? He uh, he would have managed to been he would have been smushed like a pancake. Luckily, he survived, beat the big guy, and 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 managed to get another movie. <laughs> All right, and now the final example of Indy really showing his incredible durability is the situation where he got shot in the arm while while he was dealing with another guy who kicked through him out of the front of a moving truck. Okay. And Indy had to hold on to the hood of a tr- hood of the truck uh, for his life. He almost got crushed by the wheel, and in the process had to maneuver around, get underneath the truck. And while he's dealing with that, he's getting shot at and everything in between. As he does all this, he manages to latch on for dear life with his uh, with his whip, uh, a part of the tr- underneath the trunk, the truck hold on to it and then he like a bump i think he was holding on to a bumper or something and then he gets himself back onto the truck takes the guy down who was driving the truck and t- after he threw him out the out of the truck while with a broken arm remember with a bullet in his arm sorry so indy shows that he is just not that easy to beat okay so this is how i think this plays out so indy is uh i mean fighting skills wise they're both kind of in the same brawl bare knuckle abilities so I don't think that they're gonna they're evenly matching that essence, but Indy's best chance of winning this is getting involved in a moving environment, something where it requires a lot of like a moving a moving train, getting in a moving train, or moving into a, getting on a plane or something like that, or anywhere where maybe there's like an eruption, a, a volcanic eruption, or an earthquake or something like that. Indy will be able to adapt a lot better in the environment than Rick will. Let's not forget that uh, on top of that, Indy has fought people twice his size and managed to get away with it. So I do think that he could maybe put Rick down for sure in a bare knuckle fight. Um, On top of that, Indy has his signature whip. His whip is gonna be able to disarm Rick's weapons in any kind of way. Whichever guns he has, Indy's gonna be able to take the whip and take it out and disarm him in any position or any situation that he needs to take, take him down in. So given all of that, given the fact that Indy can adapt into his environments, no matter, or adapt with or without a weapon. Given the fact that uh, Indy is a is a pretty tough guy and he's beaten people twice his size, I'm gonna say he takes Rick down and gets the win. All right, so right off the bat, my guy survived a hanging, okay? He was getting choked to death and his neck was strong enough to survive getting hung or hanged, okay? So right off the bat, just say it. And I'll be representing the Mummies franchise, Rick Okano. Okay, so I don't really need a lot like my other adversary. I'm just gonna make it kind of the basics. So let's talk about the two really crazy uh, mythical, magical creatures, demonic creatures or demon creatures you wanna call them that he's gone against. One, the jumping mummies. If you remember the second one, they were jumping and climbing like Spider-Man, okay? Through buildings, okay? And he managed to fight against those things. He fought those things off. And yeah, that was pretty intense. And he fought those things off again in the first one, I believe, when they had uh, blades and they were thrown down with them. He still fought them off. So he, he's not... S- a weak link in this essence the second one being the yetis okay i know if you haven't seen the mummy three it is in there but i will tell you this right now you don't need to see it okay the mummy three was probably hands down the worst of the franchise it ruined the whole franchise if you ask me it's just just like godfather three the mummy three was a travesty that being said what do you call it the Yetis, he fought against Yetis, okay? That's still gotta count for some. He fought against uh, the undead and many countless times, okay? He fought against mummies. How many times did he fight mummies? He fought mummies four times, okay? He fought the uh, he fought Imhotet twice, okay? He fought the Scorpion King, uh, who is half hybrid and half human, 
okay? I mean, sorry, half human and half scorpion. Giant size, right? It's not a regular size, it's a giant size scorpion. He's huge, okay? Bigger than a building almost. Okay, he was that, that was, that's terrifying. And then, of course, the Jet Li mummy that's an emperor or something like that, okay, with magical powers. So, he fought four times and he won four times. So, his track record as far as fighting mythical creatures or mythical magical creatures from the dead, he knows how to put them back down on the ground. Let's talk about his reflexes. He managed to dodge a blade being thrown at him, he managed to dodge a poisonous snake being thrown at him. He caught it midair before it could actually bite him. So Rick O'Connell is incredibly amazing with his reflexes. Okay, he survived a, a magical storm. Now I say magical because it was Immolten, the mummy, who used his powers to conjure a sandstorm that was taking down the plane that Rick O'Connell and a few of his other buddies were in. They survived that. Rick survived that. Granted, the pilot didn't survive that, but Rick did survive that storm. So he shows that he's capable of surviving some really intense pressure. Another thing is his incredible speed with reflexes because he was able to outrun a swarm of beetles that get this, okay? They get inside, if you haven't seen the franchise yet, uh, they get inside your skin and they crawl up from inside your skin to your brain and then they kill you through your brain, okay? That's insane. He managed to dodge those. Not to mention, he's a descendant of warriors from the past, okay? His ancestors sh uh, are warriors. Uh, and he and he even knows he's a warrior now. He believes it. So, given the fact that he it's in his blood, I, I don't, uh, I gotta say that he, he has that upper advantage in that essence. So, how this plays out. I actually think that Rick has a meaner hook than Indy would because he punched the crap out of a punch of mummies. So, he was capable of doing that. And I think he's capable of and he's, he was capable of lifting a man his, like smaller than him up, up in a ceiling fan. So he shows that he does have some strength in him to go against someone if he needs to in a bare knuckle fight. All right, so how this plays out in my book, fist to fist, I think Rick's got him. Indy might use his whip to kind of choke uh, Rick out, but Rick has a strong neck. If he was capable of uh, surviving a, a, a hanging, he could survive any kind of pull that Indy might throw. So that will backfire on Indy if he uses that whip. And then Rick can overthrow him and throw mean punches left and right. He's able to take a couple swings off on a mummy. He could take a few swings off on Indy. And on top of that, what do you call it? Rick is probably going to keep it uh, to the ground, no movements, keep it just a one-on-one -on -one fight, no matter what's going down. But regardless of how this plays out, you guys know that Rick doesn't need a signature weapon. His thing has always been get a gun or get a sword and use it to his advantage. A spear, whatever he had in his possession that's a weapon, he can get it. He always gets it. So regardless of how this plays out, regardless of Andy and Rick wind up being uh, fist to fist, eventually Rick is going to get himself a pistol. Rick is eventually going to get himself a blade. And when that happens, Indy is screwed. Game over. Rick O'Connell for the win. As always, no press fam. It's not up to me. It's not up to Biggs. It's up to you guys. So if you guys liked my argument, you know what you could do? You can hashtag Indiana Jones. And if you like my argument, you can hashtag Rick O'Connell. And as always, no press fam, we really appreciate you guys. Catch you guys later. Peace.